It is December here in Arizona, and that means it's time to get some sweet potatoes harvested. That's up next. everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here on December 11th, 2021. We're actually going to be harvesting sweet potatoes and believe it or not, here in the beginning of December, it's finally kind of time <laughs> to go ahead and get that done. So let's talk a little bit about where we're at, what we have behind us, and more importantly, let's see what's in the ground. So these beds, believe it or not, were nothing but brand new soil when we first started planting slips in here. And what I want to do is rewind back to the end of May, beginning of June. We actually have some footage from one of our vlogs where we were taking sweet potato slips and I'm explaining kind of how that's done. So I have two different sweet potatoes. We have this one here that's actually from our sweet potato harvest last year. This one we're excited about because it's actually a purple sweet potato. You just take a few toothpicks, so two to three toothpicks. You're going to want to push them through. It doesn't matter whether you're using a ball jar like this or some other type of vessel, but you want to have something that's got a big enough opening at the top that's going to allow you to take your sweet potato, slide toothpicks into the top of the sweet potato, and basically allow it to essentially hover in the water inside the glass. You've got several different what we call slips, these shoots that are coming up here, and what you're going to want to do is take these off of the sweet potato once they're about a foot or so tall. Now I have a slip. So I'm just going to take off the first few leaves so that when I put it into the jar, it's not going to have any leaves in the water. And after a few days, you're going to see this start to happen. We keep them in the south facing area that happens to be our slider, which allows them to get nice and green and grow very, very aggressively. Before you plant them is you need to harden these off. And what I mean by that is give them a little taste of what it's gonna feel like being outside. These have been outside now, I think this is the third day. You can see they're doing just fine because we've kept them in the shade, but they're really starting to root out very, very aggressively. In fact, you can see that one there is just doing fantastic. Once the sun starts to go down just a little bit and it cools off just a tad, we're gonna plant these in those garden beds. So now we fast forward about six months later and you can see just how well these have done. Now, we take several cuttings of the greens, which are edible, and they're also fantastic livestock fodder. So we've been feeding these to our chickens and turkeys, also our pigs. In fact, you'll probably get a shot of pigs today munching down on some of these greens. These have been in the ground for about six months. Now, the variety, I'm not too sure. I know these are purple sweet potatoes, at least they should be. I believe that's what we planted in these beds. And now six months later, these should be ready to go ahead and harvest. So now typically you would find in most areas of the country that these would start to die back. And typically we would have the same thing occurring here usually in November, but because we were so warm this November, we didn't have that dieback. So here we are in December, last night being our first night that was close to freezing, we're down into the high 30s. We're gonna go ahead and get this harvest done because we know that as we go into this week and we hit the low 30s, we're definitely gonna to get to the point where we're pushing it with keeping these in the ground. So the first thing we need to do in order to get a harvest done today is to go ahead and remove all of the tops from our sweet potatoes. Yeah, so make sure I don't lose my finger to any snakes. I know, kind of creepy, huh? Mm -hmm. We got those two, but we're gonna have to kind of dig around a bit. This is where we had one of the slips planted and you can see how much it's just kind of taken off. What we're finding is we have roots just coming out everywhere. 
And given the fact they've been in here for six months and seeing all of the roots that we have going throughout this bed, and we're gonna go ahead and remove all of the wood chips. One of the great parts about having sweet potatoes and having that cover on the ground all summer is it's taken these wood chips, oh man, and just started turning this into just wonderful, wonderful garden soil. That's not moving at all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> kind of the primary root that we had down here in the ground. And we've got a couple of decent little sweet potatoes that we can pull off of the kind of this main trunk. But these purple sweet potatoes, you can see, are really, really small. Now, I think part of that might just be the soil. It's a little compacted, which we kind of have to deal with here. So we might need to think that through as we decide where we want to plant sweet potatoes in the future, because this is the very first thing planted in this bed. But you can see we have some decent sized sweet potatoes that we'll be able to pull off of this main root. And then these long skinny ones, these can still be used. So what we're kind of kicking around here is probably looking at these for maybe some sweet potato pie uh, or something similar, but definitely can still be used. Maybe even some small sweet potato chips uh, would work as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get to work on getting the rest of these sweet potatoes pulled and just get an idea of just how much mass we can get out of this one bed with what started out as three slips. I think we have about 15 to 20 pounds or so of sweet potatoes here, but you can see we still have some decent sweet potato harvest out of this one bed. Here's a good one as well. So we have two more beds that we need to get done today. And we also have a huge pile <laughs> of extra, you can see here, that have kind of gashes and things like that. Also the kind of the main root mass uh, that we have here that are definitely gonna go to the pigs. So we probably have a good five to 10 pounds of roots that we're gonna be feeding to the pigs. Again, probably somewhere in the 15 pound range, I'm guessing out of this one bed that we'll be keeping for ourselves. So one of the wonderful things about sweet potatoes is what it will do to the soil itself. Now, as hard as this soil may, may be, we can still get our hands in there for the most part, which is not the case with the soil that I'm standing on right now. This stuff's hard as a rock. So one of the things that we want to continue to do as we go through the rest of this winter is start to build soil back up into this bed because we will be coming behind this in the spring and planting into this bed. What we have left in the soil here is small roots that we weren't able to get to. And we're gonna be actually adding some additional material on top so that we can actually continue to build soil here through the winter and into spring. We have the harvest done from those three beds. You can see we have all kinds of sizes here. These purple sweet potatoes, I don't know the variety. We got them from the grocery store, but the one that we used as a seed potato was probably about this size actually. So I'm guessing that these probably don't form really large roots like you would typically find with the orange sweet potatoes. Even got this uh, massive one here. <laughs> but what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna go through here and pull out some of the smaller ones. We've actually been doing that as we've been harvesting and feeding those to the pigs because obviously they love these. So we're gonna go back through here and take a lot of these small ones out and then we actually need to show you how we're going to attempt curing what's left for eating. What we're trying to do in the curing process is to essentially take the starches and convert those over into sugar. And these ideally grow in tropical type environments. So year round, you know, it's 70 to 80 degrees, 80, 90, 100% humidity. So what we need to do is mimic that here in the desert, which can be a challenge because this time of year, we're extremely dry, like we always are. <laughs> 
but we're cold and we're, we're down into the 60s as far as our highs during the day. So what we need to do is create an environment that's very similar to the tropics. So we'll be doing that inside our house, but the biggest issue for us is really the humidity. So what we're gonna be utilizing is a large tub. We just get these from Home Depot. I'll be taking some straw that we have soaking in water, layering that down on the bottom, and then we'll be keeping the sweet potatoes in this crate, dropping this into the, create, into the crate, and then utilizing a heating pad inside the house where it's about 70 degrees, and this has a thermostat on it. It will keep it about 80 degrees, inside the bin and we'll have it more humid probably above 80 percent but we're really trying to just keep that humidity in there and allow those to cure for about a week oh one other thing i should mention is we did not clean these so all we did was just wipe the excess dirt off these are still pretty dirty and that's okay that's actually part of ensuring that these things will keep long term so there's a good layer of dust on these guys here still Okay, so you can see this is gonna create a nice humid environment. Obviously, we'll have a lid on here. What we'll do is we'll keep this inside the house, keep it set at about 80 degrees, so we have a consistent temperature, but the key is gonna be the fact that it's the right temperature and we have a nice humid environment for these guys, at least for the next week. And then what we'll do is we'll transfer them into dry, cold storage with very low humidity. We have our garage that faces north and right now that garage is staying somewhere around 55 to 60 degrees and it's extremely dry, which is ideal for long-term storage of root crops like this. We have a good 30 to 40 pounds of sweet potatoes that should easily get us through the winter. And more importantly, we're gonna have seed stock that's gonna be ready for us to replant these sweet potatoes come spring. So just wanna thank you guys for joining us today. Obviously we're dealing with a unique environment here in the desert, but you can see what can be done with basically one seed potato. Give it a few months and even here in the Arizona desert, you can have a wonderful crop of sweet potatoes. So, you know, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. You know, we cover a lot of things here on the channel. This is one of the many things we'll be covering as we move forward onto this newly establishing farm. We'd love to have you as a subscriber and share the content. If you know anybody that's into this kind of thing, definitely helps us here when you do that. Any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, that is a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. And they come, kind of go everywhere. I guess that's why Havelina did a good job of... Harvesting? Harvesting, yeah. So what you're saying is we need a bunch of Havelina to come in here and help us? <laughs> no, thank you, because we'll <laughs> eat them. Exactly. Yeah, okay, you're right. What did you just say? <laughs> wait, wait, can you say that for the camera? <laughs> right. You gotta say it louder than that because nobody can hear it. They won't even believe me. You're right. Doesn't happen very often. I'm taking them as I get them. <laughs>